treatments for BV are effective and which should you use? In this video, let's look at a few bacterial vaginosis treatments and facts about BV. Bacterial vaginosis or BV is a non-sexually transmitted infection that we think is caused by a disturbance of the normal vaginal flora or germs that usually live within the vagina. It's a lot more common than we think. Studies suggest that 9 out of every 100 women may have BV at any specified time. And according to the Centers for Disease Prevention and Control, CDC, BV is the most common bacterial infection in women between the ages of 15 and 44 years. So here are some treatment facts about bacterial vaginosis. One, how to treat bacterial vaginosis. Often it's treated with antibiotics such as metronidazole or clindamycin. You can take these by mouth or vaginally via a pessary or a gel. They can provide 70 to 80 percent of cure after about four weeks but recurrence that is the infection coming back is quite common and can happen within 12 months of treatment. Number two, on the other hand, bacterial vaginosis can disappear spontaneously without treatment. But waiting for this to happen, of course, is really uncomfortable, given the excessive offensive discharge that's present and the discomfort that you might feel. And remember, not everyone with a bacterial vaginosis infection develops symptoms. In 50% of cases, BV is asymptomatic. Three, if you have BV, you are at an increased risk of developing a sexually transmitted infection. And if it's present when you are pregnant, there's several serious complications that could happen. Examples include a late miscarriage, preterm labor and preterm birth, preterm premature rupture of membranes, low birth weight, and infection of the womb after birth. If you have BV, you're also more likely to become infected after simple standard gynecological procedures like a cervical smear. Number four, if you have BV, but have no symptoms and are not pregnant, you do not require treatment. BV causes a heavy and often fishy smelling discharge. It's usually not itchy, sore or painful, but some may experience burning or pain when peeing. Five, BV can often return following complete treatment. Now, often this is because certain factors encourage the overgrowth of the germ again. And examples of these are being sexually active. Now, we've said BV is not a sexually transmitted infection, true. But being sexually active or even having another sexually transmitted infection at the same time increases the risk of developing BV. Next, using douches, deodorants and vaginal washes or feminine hygiene products. The germ causing BV is an anaerobic bacterium called Gardnerella vaginalis. When it overgrows in the vagina, the levels of the normal protective vaginal germs or flora, also known as lactobacilli, are reduced. This makes the vagina less acidic and prone to infections like thrush, that is candida, or BV. And also conditions where the vaginal pH is less likely to be acidic. For instance, during the menstrual period or soon after sex, where semen collection in the vagina is likely to make it less acidic. In addition, having the copper coil in place as well as smoking are two other things that we know could increase the risk of BV coming back after treatment. Number six, to reduce the risk of developing BV using hormonal contraceptive methods, regularly using a condom and having sex with a circumcised partner are thought to help. Number seven, are probiotics good for treating bacterial vaginosis? Now, the effect of probiotic therapy on bacterial vaginosis is rather controversial. However, an analysis of multiple studies showed that Using probiotics is safe and there may be some short and long-term benefits to treating bacterial vaginosis. Number eight, how to use hydrogen peroxide for treating bacterial vaginosis is quite a common question that people ask who are not really keen on using antibiotic treatment. But is it a good idea? Well, apparently not, according to a 2003 study from Thailand. So they compared the use of hydrogen peroxide to metronidazole for treating bacterial vaginosis. They found that the cure rate was lower for those women using hydrogen peroxide than for those who were using metronidazole. But those who used the antibiotics had much more significant side effects like nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea, which is common. We know these are side effects associated with metronidazole. Next, how does oregano oil treat bacterial vaginosis? does it? A comprehensive study on oregano oil by the St. Patrick Institute of Medical Sciences confirms 
much of what we know about the medical benefits of oregano oil and provided some more information. It contains carvacrol, which is a potent phenol that gives the strong antimicrobial effect that many associate with oregano oil. I didn't find any specific studies comparing oregano oil treatment for BV with antibiotics, but in a 2018 US study, they found that oregano oil showed quite significant antibacterial activity against 11 germ types that were quite resistant to some more common antibiotics, such as the Pseudomonas and Staph aureus germs. So the thinking is there may be some benefit for people who've not found lasting effects by using the regular antibiotics. My caveat, please speak to a regulated herbal practitioner about how to use oregano oil and apply it and be mindful that just like many other oils, you can't apply it directly to the sensitive genital area. Many times it needs to be mixed with a diluent or carrier oil so that it doesn't cause any harmful effects. Number 10, boric acid and bacterial vaginosis. Boric acid is a homeopathic preparation containing small amounts of boric acid and other elements, including probiotics and antioxidants and vitamin C and vitamin E. Boric acid is weak compared to stronger acids like hydrochloric acid. It's thought to have antifungal and mild antiseptic properties. It may also work by replenishing the normal vaginal acidity and balancing those helpful vaginal flora or lactobacilli we mentioned at the beginning. So as a result, many people feel that it might be useful in some vaginal conditions. In some people, it's useful for treating recurring yeast or candida infections. So it could also be considered for bacterial vaginosis, although the primary treatment is antibiotics. We know that a lone boric acid is is not an effective treatment for BV, especially if it's recurrent. But in combination with some antibiotics, it may help in treating or managing recurrent bacterial vaginosis. Some people love the idea of using boric acid as a vaginal cleanser to eliminate vaginal odor. The problem with that though, is that using it frequently can lead to overstripping the vagina of its natural germs, which affects its acidity and then makes you susceptible to all these infections that we've talked about. Next, how? do men get rid of bacterial vaginosis infections? In fact, what is men's role versus their female partners when it comes to bacterial vaginosis? Can men get BV? Well, first, the penis doesn't have the same bacterial makeup or flora as the vagina. So men cannot spontaneously get bacterial vaginosis. Like we've said, BV is not sexually transmitted, but studies have shown that men who are not circumcised may carry the BV germ around the penis so they could pass it on to their female sexual partners. So men can't get BV, but they can pass the Gardnerella vaginalis on their penis or inside the urethra within the penis after having penetrative vaginal intercourse. If a man develops symptoms like a discharge from the penis or experiences burning when passing urine, we should check it's not something else causing the infection like an STI or a urinary tract infection rather than assuming that he's got BV. So men whose partners have BV often themselves do not require treatment. But two female sexual partners, if one person has BV, the other partner has to be treated because they potentially can transfer the infection from one person to the next. Can B-days cause bacterial vaginosis? B-days, how do you pronounce that? B-days, B-days. B-days are also known as warm water cleaning toilets. They used to be quite a popular household item in some parts of the world, like in Japan, but they appear to be gaining interest in other places like the United States. Essentially, a modern B-day sprays water to clean your private parts after using the toilet. Some B-days have heated water, deodorants, or air dryers for ease and comfort of use. You're meant to wipe your anus clean with toilet paper before using the B-day to wash and dry afterwards. It sounds sanitary, so what could the problem be? Well, the main concerns amount to the potential accumulation of germs around that spray nozzle. They could potentially transfer from the nozzle in the water that you spray towards your genitals. Well, a Japanese study in 2017 found that most of the over 250 B-days they analyzed in a university hospital were colonized with germs like staph and strep bugs. And the next problem is that using the bidet regularly may wash away the protective vaginal flora, thus reducing its protection and increasing your risk of infections. There's still a lot of thinking about whether it's a good idea or not, but just going by these studies, avoiding using a bidet is probably a good idea, 
especially if you're pregnant or you're prone to recurring infections like BV or thrush. Thanks for watching. I hope this provides a good overview of the treatment around bacterial vaginosis. Let me know what you think in the comment section and have you tried anything else for treating BV? Did it work or not? Please make sure you share this video to help someone else. Remember to give it a like and subscribe to the channel of course and I will see you again soon.